Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Happy Wednesday. Today, I have a super special guest, um, one of my favorite people in the world that I haven't seen in such a long time, and I'm so excited to have her here, Madison fucking Ivy. Oh, Miss Holly Brandle, how much I have missed you. I missed you, too. She is one of my favorite persons in the entire world for forever. I love you. I know. I feel the same way about you. Whenever people ask me, like, who your favorite porn star is, I'm always like, Madison Ivy. Like, you're always, like, my top three all the time. You're always my top shooter. You're just, like, we work so well together because, I mean, for me, I feel like probably, honestly, everybody feels that way about you because you're not only, like, an incredibly good model. You um, are way too sweet. (laughs) No, you are. I mean, come on. Like you, you know, you have that thing. Like you know how to like arrest the camera, and you know how to pose, yes. and you know Ooh. how to like. I mean, you're really sexy, and um, but not only that, but you're like incredibly focused and organized, and you're very involved in the shoot, and you have great ideas. That's what I love about you. So you'll always come with like really cool wardrobe options, and you'll ha- always have really cool ideas. And like, I just know that like when I'm shooting you, it's mm-hmm. almost like I don't have to do anything. I just feel like like you do everything, and it's just like the easiest day in the world for me. See, that's how I feel. I feel like I just show up with all of my favorite things, yeah. and my favorite person in the entire world is there, and we just create something magically fun and beautiful. And yeah. I don't know. It's just like it's such. It's not even work. I can't yeah. call it work. Right. But it's with you. Yeah, that's how I feel. It's just a wonderful day. What was the first time? So when did we first meet? How long ago was that? That was. Oh my god! So I was eighteen at the you time. Were 18. I was eighteen. I remember. And you looked eighteen. I looked eighteen. Yeah, it was a baby. Yeah. But yeah, I remember walking on your guys' set, and it was maybe my second or third shoot. Uh huh. And I remember your mom being there, uh-huh. and I was just so nervous because I had heard so much about you guys. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh my god, these are the famous Randalls. <laughs> like, <laughs> just don't freak out. Don't freak out. Mm-hmm. And then I got to shoot with this lovely girl girl set, and. I was the obvious the little schoolgirl mm-hmm. and my big boss lady and mm, yeah. I just I and loved that was it. back when we had the studio, right? Yeah, yeah. when we was in the <sighs> studio and we used to be able to like build sets and we had like a stylist and you caught us right like on the end of like the golden age. I really <laughs> before really we just crashed. Did honestly, yeah. like I got in and everything was like. It was either really high end or it was like casting couch, mm. and then it was like okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. And I just loved coming on your guys' set because everything, like you said, every little detail, the sets, the designs, the coloring of all the fabrics, pillows, yes. they all mesh so well. And yeah. to me, everything around me matters. Everything around me makes me feel sexy. And if yeah. there's something off in the room, I can't not focus on it. It's yeah. like a nose in the middle of the face. Yeah. Yeah. How um what were some of your first scenes? Like do you what was your actual first first scene that you did? Oh, my first first scene. It was so freaky because it was the night scene. So okay. I remember pulling up to the house and it was mm, roughly maybe about 8 or 9 p.m. <laughs> Did that just feel shady that like right off the bat? so shady. Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is weird. I hate night shoots. I, I did one last week and... You know what I did? I left my camera out in the rain. Oh, you did not. I did. For 20-minute torrential <gasps> downpour, like what we were experiencing on our drive here. Oh, no. Yeah, so fuck night shoots. Oh, fuck my night My camera shoots. is ruined, by the way. I'm so sorry for it's your okay. camera. I have a friend who is sending me a new one. Oh, there you go. Which is like super generous of him, and I'm like really, really grateful. Aww. And I'm pretty sure his wife listens to this podcast, so thank you so much. Oh, that's even better. I love couples that like get into it together. Yeah, she takes my workshops, so... Um, <laughs> Um, And he's, like, super supportive of her, and she's a great photographer. She gets the best. Honestly, like, on my workshop, she gets the best shots. Her stuff's always my favorite. She's got a great eye. Most girls, honestly, they they really know how to shoot other females because Mm -hmm. they do see the things that, like, we're looking at, the things that would bother us. Mm -hmm. Uh, Most of the time, I feel like when people look at a photo, they don't see those little flaws that could be just tweaked a little tiny mm-hmm. bit and for some you. reason a girl when we look at another girl we're like nope let me just because I this. think we see those things in our bodies yeah. you know what I mean because we obsess over our own flaws mm-hmm. and every, like every woman's like that so like when we see the things that we don't like in ourselves like in someone else then we try to fix that because yes. we're, we're hypersensitive to that mm-hmm. but it's funny it's interesting right because it's almost like I mean, why do we want to look good, supposedly, for men, right? Mm. But it's funny that men don't notice that stuff no. and that you see that in men's photography sometimes. Obviously, not always. Not always. Amazing, amazing, incredible male photographers that totally catch that stuff. But it's just interesting how, like, 
the things that we are hyper aware of because we think it looks bad to men actually aren't noticed by men. <laughs> no, it's so true. Because I'll see a photo go up and it'll be like the premiere promo shot for the yeah. scene. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, Lord, who chose that one photo to represent this scene? Yeah. And it's just like, I have to text someone and be like, hey, I hate to ask, but can we change that? Because yeah. that's like the one photo I would not have chosen. Yeah. So. I I always edit my sets before I turn them in because otherwise the client will 100% pick the one <laughs> picture I hate. Right. So I have to remove that from the equation. Or like the mid-motion Shots. Yeah. They, they, oh my God. When they get it, like, it's obvious the girl was in the middle of moving, like her hands kind of blurry. Yep. Or my face, it just looks like I'm making like a really dumb, sexy face. Yeah. Like, Cause I'm, you're like halfway between like, expressions. Blah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I know. I get it. I get it. Okay. So, anyway, we went completely <laughs> off subject. So, your first scene, you showed up to your house. It's eight yes. o'clock at night. It was a dark and stormy night. It was a dark and stormy <laughs> night. The door was left ajar <laughs> and a white sheet hung in front of it. So, already I'm walking up to the front door. And oh, wait. So, this is for real. This is oh, for I real. You're no, like jokingly I'm, setting some setup. Oh, no. I'm, I'm just setting the tone. Okay, but no, okay. this is the reality of like the, my first scene is I pull up to this house and the door is wide open and mm-hmm. there's nothing but a white sheet hanging in front of it so I go through the white sheet come in lights all around set up and they're all just pointed directly at a couch Mm -hmm. and this is obviously like one of the basic like oh I'm some so and so's daughter and I fell asleep and the house boy came and he kind of we had our way with each other Mm -hmm. but it was just like I just remember thinking, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah. Am I really doing this? Yeah. Was it with a guy? It was with a guy. Who was the guy? Do you remember? I cannot remember. I don't think he's in the business anymore. Not memorable. Perfectly. No. Yeah. Okay. What company was it for? Oh, it was for Smash, I believe. Okay. Are they around still? I don't think so. They, uh, I signed for them, I think, my last, uh, like, my, it was one of my last two or three AVNs before my accident. Mm. And then I have not seen... Or heard from them since. Hmm. So maybe they just transitioned into a new online presence. Sure. Or they just went out of business. No, they just went out of business. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get like a letter from like Smash's CEO. We're, right. like, we're not out of business. We're not out of business. <laughs> Sorry, Smash, if you're still in business. We love you. We love you. <laughs> okay, so go on. Uh, but I, I just remember thinking, okay, I don't know what to do with myself. Is this sexy? Is that sexy? And all, all I could think about was, what is my face doing? Mm-hmm. And I would just remember being like, okay, I have to see this. I have to watch this when it comes out. And it took forever. So I must have bugged my agent so hard. Yeah. When is it coming out? When can I see it? Yeah. I just want to see how it looks. Right. And so I got like a couple friends I made together in the business to like watch and kind of give me some critiques, mm-hmm. and I love that you, I love that you took that initiative because a lot of girls don't even watch their scenes, and that's the thing. Like I had a hard time actually watching my own scenes yeah. for years yeah. after doing that exact thing because most of my friends were very positive about mm-hmm. it, but there was an older uh, male adult star whose name escapes me at this moment, but he. He commented some very harsh things and was like, this is very boring and just plain and blasé. And I'm like, okay, well, uh, this is my first scene ever. Yeah. Uh, Give me, cut me some slack, yeah, asshole. Yeah, like, I'm not doing triple anal here yeah. on my first yeah. go. So to him, it was very, like, almost a disappointment. And in my mind, that was, like, a challenge. Mm, okay. Okay. You think this is a disappointment? You don't, okay, well, let's, let's. Renegot- let's rethink this. Mm-hmm. So that's why I like love wardrobe, just hair, makeup, accessories. Well, yeah, so probably what contributed to the fact that the scene was so flat and boring to him was the fact that, as you said, it was a bunch of lights pointed at a couch. Yeah. Like, there doesn't sound like there was a lot of production there was value to it. Zero so, production yeah. value. Yeah. So. But how did the scene itself go? Like, how did you feel at the time? Were you like... Was it okay? Or? It was good. I honestly enjoyed myself. Okay, good. But uh, it was just nerve-wracking, honestly. Yeah. You know, taking your clothes off and having sex in front of people for the first time is obviously like, ooh, yeah. this is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even though I had previously worked at an adult club and mm-hmm. I had done girl-on-girl shower shows mm-hmm. where you just interact with another girl and people watch, there's something different about it being there with a guy and, and there's people and cameras and mm-hmm. knowing. Lights. That it's... 
Yeah. It's yep. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I, sure. I loved it. It just, like, captured me. And I was like, oh, I got to do more of this. Wow. And then Madison Ivy was born. Um, so... So then we shot you. Yes. Like what we were did you say we were really like your third scene? You you guys were my third scene. Okay. I had a girl girl and then I had another girl girl with you guys. Okay. And then we shot you the scene that I remember where I thought I saw the beginning of your star <laughs> power was um the scene with you and McBlue. In, in the school, library. In the library with the schoolgirl thing. Yes. Um and I remember being like, This girl, like, she likes this. Like she, you know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. we could see your like enthusiasm. And so, um, well, I had watched actually a lot of porn before getting into it, which is good. Do your research. Do your research. Yeah. Like in any aspect of life, do your research. Of course. But uh, Mick Blue actually was like a huge crush of mine. Oh, really? Yeah. So James Dean had booked a scene for us together. And the scene never got released. I never know. I have no idea where it went, what happened to it. But I had met him one day, and I had told him how much of a crush I had on Mick. Mm -hmm. And he arranged it. We shot it. And I found out later on that he just set it up so I could have sex with Mick. And I was like, what a sweetheart. What a nice guy. Shut (laughs) up. Just getting me that D for free. (laughs) Um, So then you started shooting, obviously, a lot. And then um, you signed a contract. Yes. With um, With Mind Geek. Geek, Yes. yes. And um, we went to Costa Rica for Twisties. That was so fun. That was so fun. I ate so many bananas. I know. (laughs) Oh, my God. It was so funny. I had Nicole on here a few months ago, and we talked about all the bananas. (laughs) Banana Watch. No, it was Monkey Watch 2014, I think. Yes. And, like... I forget what the other thing about bananas. Yep, because me and her couldn't stop eating them. Yeah. You know, we'd eat like 14 a day, and then we would just have banana talk. <laughs> <laughs> and then people would be like, oh, is this some dirty like innuendo thing? Yeah. Like, no, it was just straight up bananas. Straight up. You know, it's so funny because that trip was so great. So first of all, like... The first thing I did when I got there was I bought a huge bag of weed for the house because I knew uh, everyone was a stoner. You know me so well. And especially you. I was like, Matt is an Ivy's coming. I'm like, I have to get her weed. I like mentally prepared myself to be with uh, I remember too. you told me that. You showed up. You're like, okay, I prepared myself to like not, you know, have weed for like four or five days. And I was like, girl, I bought you a bag. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Spoils me. This woman is perfect. But it's Costa Rica. I mean, it's like the east. Like, it's not hard to get weed there. You know what oh, I mean? No, it's, it's everywhere. It's so true. I like literally rolled up. Got picked up by the driver. We pull up to the beach before we rolled up to the house. And he's uh-huh. like, oh, you want to smoke a joint on the beach? And I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, halfway through the joint, these cops roll up on motorcycles. And I'm like, oh, shit. I don't know the laws here in Costa Rica about smoking yeah. weed or anything. And they were like, oh, what do you have? Oh, give us your pipe. You can keep the weed. And they just, like, drove off. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I forgot about that I was story. Like, what? That is so weird. I was just like, my heart was like beating out of my chest. Can you chest. imagine? It's like the first thing, before you even get to the house, before you even arrive at the shoot, you get arrested in Costa Rica for smoking weed on the beach. And then like, I had to call Twisty and be like, Madison Ivy's in jail. Right? And so how do we work this? How do we, like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so fun, though. <laughs> that would have been so horrible. That would have been so horrible. Yeah, but it wasn't. And, it, you know, it was great, too, was that, like, so literally everyone in the house was a stoner. Um, yep. Um, even my assistant and the makeup artist. I remember we were all just, like, sit around and <clears throat> eat Blaze. That was so yeah. nice. Yeah, and it was great, too, because um, because everybody was a stoner and nobody was really a drinker. Like, my big concern was taking a bunch of models to Costa Rica and, like, people, like, going crazy and, like, partying and, like, getting themselves in trouble. I think and that's then, the biggest concern yeah. if you take models anywhere is yeah. the, the just... Like the liability. Yeah, you need yeah. to behave yourself. Yeah, you need, exactly. You're representing and like, a brand. Right, and I've got to get shoots done, and I had these nightmares of dragging girls out of bed, like super hungover the next morning and just <laughs> having like a nightmare. But the thing was is that because nobody was a drinker and everybody smoked weed, everyone was in bed by 10. Yep. Like it was the easiest thing ever. Like I didn't have to worry about anyone. The biggest problem I had was fucking Tyler Nixon going out and surfing every day and getting sunburned. Oh, That wow. was my biggest problem. I was like, Tyler, you need to wear sunscreen. We have to shoot a scene. You can't look like a lobster. And that's, oh my God, you just stole the words right out of my mouth. I'm like, he came back looking like a lobster. I know. I was so mad at him. I was, I was like, like, Tyler. Like, you're our only guy here. I know. I'm like, you're the only dick. you got to take care of it. <laughs> oh my God. That was such a good trip. And then literally on our way back to the airport leaving, uh, Nicole and I were like, wait, 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 stop at this stand. And we rush out and we 
both buy a giant bag of bananas before we go and get back on the plane. That was like our finishing act was like the bananas, bananas. Yeah, that was um, that was great. And then we got that we that shoot with you with the snake. Oh yes, and they almost didn't use it. I, I remember, remember that. there was something there was something legal was worried it about was, it being a snake mm. and being like too fat. I don't know because they don't like animals in their shoots like at all now. And I totally understand from like a certain perspective kind of thing. But but it's like we're being so sweet to this. I was honestly I was cuddling the snake. You oh. scared the shit out of me because that snake got really close to your <laughs> face like fairly often, and you were like so you were like talking to it, and you were so fine with it. And I was like, the snake's gonna bite her face. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I, my insurance doesn't cover this shit. Like, what am I gonna do if like the snake decides to like? Because it was this huge like boa constrictor. What if it kills you? Right. What if it wraps itself around you and fucking strangles it's you? Like, okay, Madison Ivy almost got arrested, and then she's got. Killed by a snake, damn it. <laughs> I can't take you anywhere. You can't take me anywhere. <laughs> but I just remember being hit up and being like, hey, they want to do a shoot with a snake. Will you do it? Because mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like anyone else wants to do yeah. it. And I was like, hell yes. Yeah. Give me a snake. Yeah, you're pretty fearless. I like to think so, but honestly, I'm an incredibly shy person mm. by nature. Like, I have grown into my own skin, Mm -hmm. but I was just the weird, awkward little girl that just sat with her art book by herself almost my entire life. Really? And then I just, one day was like, eh, fuck it. Interesting. So that's, so you really transitioned. So, um, are there people like from your high school and stuff who like just cannot fucking believe that this is the path you've gone (laughs) down? I think that's like almost our entire town because I came from such a small town Mm -hmm. and What's weird too is I was the weird homeschooled kid, mm. so I never Gotta even worry. watch out for those homeschooled kids. We're coming to get you. You're all so weird. <laughs> we really are. <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was good in a lot of sense because it kept me away from a lot of like general trouble mm-hmm. making, drinking, doing drugs. Mm. So I actually never even smoked cannabis until my doctor recommended it to me at the age of twenty. Wow. Because I was so thin and I just I never had an appetite. Yeah. And he was like, Well, you could take these pills or you could smoke some weed. Yeah. I remember you talking about <laughs> that because now you're obviously like a big cannabis advocate and you have your own company. So um, I remember you telling me that like you had problems eating, yeah. Um, that your stomach hurt a lot, and uh, it wasn't until you started smoking weed that that like changed everything for you. It did. It, it totally changed my life. I went from being like someone that you would look at and you would assume like, okay, this person obviously has like an eating disorder, mm-hmm. and I guess you could generalize it that way. But it's not an eating disorder I can control in any way. It's, it's just, you're not eating. You're not anorexic in the sense that like you have body dysmorphia yeah. and you think that you're fat and you're not eating because of that. You generally like have like like I can't, food sounds and like the idea and the thought of it almost makes me want to throw up. Really? Yes. And it's gotten even more difficult since the accident because I ruptured three organs as well as broke my back during the accident. Jesus. So it's uh, eating is very difficult. Interesting. Do you have only like specific things that you like to eat when you do eat or like? I do you- actually. It, okay. It's, it's cut down a lot of what I'm able to eat and okay. how much I can't, I can't have any energy drinks, any coffee really any over caffeinated stuff is really bad (coughs) heavy um meats will just like make me go into like a little ball on the floor and just be in terrible pain yeah so but it's it's just gonna take a couple years because it was massive trauma to my stomach intestines duodenum and my pancreas okay wow i have like so many things that i want to talk to you about (laughs) because obviously the accident's definitely like on that list because that was like a huge you know, obviously life-changing event, and I remember when that happened, I was so worried about you. And you sent me um, those flowers. I still have the card. Aww, she sent me flowers yay. to my room with the sweetest card, and I keep it always next to my bed. Oh, that's so great. Well, I mean, ser- okay, so I guess let's let's go into... Um, um, actually, you know what? Let's, hold on. Let's back up. Yeah. Let's finish the... Because t- I want to talk about the cannabis stuff, yes. and I want to talk about your company. I want to talk about, like the activism that you do and that kind of stuff and then we'll go into your accident yes these are all these are all areas we need to cover right there's so many things I know there's so many things I haven't seen you in so long Um, okay so the accident yes or cannabis no yes (laughs) 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 oh boy okay cannabis cannabis yes yes it is honestly it's the best thing for 
almost anything. They're finding so many different ways to use it. I grow my own just because I am really afraid of what people are putting into it as mm. we come into this new legalization. They're creating all these gray areas and they're changing laws constantly and so swiftly that the growers can't keep up. So they're kind of tricking the little grower guys out of everything to give it to the corporations. That's what I've heard. So I remember when the legalization of cannabis came onto the ballot, I had a friend who um, is also in the field and he was talking about how this was going to be a huge problem and basically the government was taking the cannabis market and like commercializing it for like yes. corporations and taking it away from, you know, mom and pop kind of growers. And that's like my big concern and because what I'm really afraid of is what they're going to be putting into it because mm. the people that I know that grow, like there's a wonderful group of people with the Jungle Boys here mm -hmm. in L.A., the TLC Collective, absolutely love them. They grow everything in-house, and they're just really there to care for the patient. They want you to know that this isn't about you know, us like really like making money. We want to help you if you have back pain, if you have anxiety, if you have seizures, you know, whatever it may be. But they come in and they actually have to have um, lawyers that they stole from NASA write all of their contracts to submit. And that's just one draft cost them. I think they said roughly a quarter of a million dollars. Jesus. So it's like every draft that they have to write for submitting for a new anything cost mm -hmm. them a quarter of a million dollars. And it's absurd. Wow. Is that be so they need these lawyers because the laws are always changing and because there's such like unsure footing yep. and yeah because I there's you know obviously like there's been a lot of cannabis places popping up all over the place and um, I remember there was one near my house that like got raided I remember seeing yep. the cops there and like they raided it and just out of curiosity I, I asked the guy. Um, I was like, what happened? And they were like, we don't know. Like, they just came. They had, like, you know, yep. because it's illegal on a federal level, but it's legal on a state level. Yep. So it's, like, super confusing. And also, too, like, won't banks, like, not? Banks won't work with you. Yeah. Um, so then you're working on a purely cash business, yep. which is dangerous to have to deal with that much cash. It makes it so much easier for people to rob you. Yes. I mean, it's just like, it's almost like being in the adult industry. Oh, it really is. You know, because you know how, like, banks will have shut down, like, accounts of porn stars and I've, stuff like that? I've had that happen to so many people, and yeah. it's just like, it's such a bummer. Yeah. Because yeah. it's no one's doing any harm to anyone else. We're just trying to run a business, and it's not an illegal business no. either. Not on a federal level, like like pot is. If if you want to make that argument, yes, like it's not illegal what we're doing. No. And and I remember, I remember actually applying for um, a credit card, and I was denied. And I talked to the guy, and I was like, I just want to know why. Like I have good credit. Like no. I have plenty of money coming through. Like I'm never late paying my bills. And he was like, well, basically, he's like, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, we Googled you and we saw, you know, and we don't support adult content because. Wow. I forgot what his reason was, but it was something like, like that it was unstable or something like that. And I was like, I'm sorry, but like my business has been way more stable through this recession yeah. than like so many mainstream industries. Like right. up until this last reception, we kind of thought we were recession proof. You know how like yeah. like alcohol and like cigarettes and like porn is like recession proof it because is. if anything people turn to that when they're down. Exactly. So yeah, I was just like that is such bullshit. But the thing is because banks are private institutions, they can do that. They can. Unfortunately. Which is really it is. It's such a bummer. Because yeah. these cannabis companies really they're not trying to hurt anyone. If no. anything, they're trying to help so many people. Right, right. And then and then the taxation on it is just absurd. If you don't have your recreational card, um I would say go get your rec card because the taxes are not going down, they're going up. Mm. So you're paying 38% wow. on every dollar. Wow. And it's just absurd. So if you have your, your medical card, which mm -hmm. you can get very very easily, and then your taxes are way lower on your purchasing options. So that's how they're making the difference between they're charging a lot more for recreational users as opposed to medical users. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah. And I understand, but it's it kind of is hypocritical when it comes to the tobacco and the alcohol industries mm -hmm. when they're all charged the same percentage of taxes across the board, really. Yeah. And also, too, if you think about it, like, and it, you know, obviously there are certain people that will probably argue with this, but um, as opposed to alcohol and cigarettes, which is 
definitely not medicine. I mean, yes. Once again, people might argue with that, but like cannabis literally is medicine, and it, it and it's been obviously, proven. Pe- yeah, obviously people use it for non medical reasons, but a lot of people do use it for medical reasons. Mm-hmm. So, like to have it kind of treated the same way. Especially when it can be extracted down to its most base compounds, which mm-hmm. is the CBD compound, mm-hmm. which is the muscle and just the the things that help you. The THC is the psychoactive right. side. Yeah. But for anyone with epilepsy and seizures or anything or cerebral palsy, this is this is a lifesaver. Yeah. And we're going to deny people something that they can get at a reasonable price that will vastly improve their lives. Yeah. It just... I hope people kind of like wake up and are just like, okay, we need to lower the taxes a little bit and not be so harsh on this. Yeah. Um, So do you have your own growing business? I grow for my personal self now. Okay. Because I'm working mostly on my clothing line now Uh and all of my art that's coming out. But you did have a growing business at one point, right? I did, actually. Now I mostly uh, help promote companies that I believe in, Mm -hmm. like the Jungle Boys. Uh, Sticky Vapes is Mm -hmm. a new one that I've discovered. They're amazing. They're uh, disposable, too. So Mm -hmm. they come in this great packaging. They're stainless steel. It just, it looks elegant. It's clean. And you just get this great perfect thing Mm -hmm. and honestly i think it's just the way to go yeah it's incredible like how to see the way that it's it's changed and it's morphed i mean i i remember i remember it like senior year of high school this was 1996 people my boyfriend wrote a story it was like his like big like english paper project and it Mm -hmm. was about why weed should be legal and why it was illegalized in the DuPont paper industry yep. and all this stuff. And I remember and he, I remember him saying to me, he's like, weed's going to be legal one day. He's like, just you wait and yep. see it is. And I was like, you're crazy. It's never going to be legal. And here we are. So many uses. Yeah. And it's just, it's just sad to think that it was just really the transition of, well, we, we don't want to pay the money to transition from mm-hmm. lumber and timber and those things to hemp and cannabis. and Right. And the pharmaceutical reps obviously had their hands in it, but yes. everyone's got a little claw on that one. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I know, right? So, um, okay, so then you talked about how you're not growing so much anymore because you're focusing on your art and your clothing line. Yes, so, I grow for my own personal use and yes. friends. And you, I remember actually it was funny because the when I saw you on Kieran's set, for when you did your first anal scene for browsers. Yes. I remember you came with like a suitcase with like huge jars filled with weed and you just gave it out to everyone on the crew <laughs> and like, oh my God, my crew was so excited. They're like, I remember I remember one of my assistants was like, can we shoot Madison every day? I'm like, I wish. You and me both, we all wish. That's, it was like, it was so funny. You're like Santa Claus. That's how everyone used to like recognize me when I would be on set. They would come in and they'd just be like... I smell something. Madison's here. <laughs> what I do, I love. I love bringing goodie bags to like all of my friends on set. Still, that's like so I still cool. do it. Yeah, that's really awesome. Okay, so tell me about your clothing line. Yes, I'm so excited about this because this is you're wearing something from it, I'm right? I was something. gonna ask you. So, Madison, for those of you who are not watching this on yes. video right now, she's wearing this really cool design bodysuit. It's like a geometric formation of like this bear smoking a joint, and this company is called Scummy Bears. Okay. And this is my one of my best friends in the entire world. Mm-hmm. And him and our other buddy, Devin, are just two of the most creative people I've ever met. And they've taken my designs and they've helped me implement them. This is like a very simple mock-up of mm-hmm. what's to come. Because mm-hmm. we have all these little intricate pieces. There's going to be almost an infinite number of line sequences uh, inside of them. Oh, wow. So when you look into it, the depth is going to take you so far, like past, like your almost perspective that it's going to trip you out a little so bit. So maybe like don't like take acid and wear it or maybe I mean, do. You honestly, you might want to, and then you might just get stuck there looking at the back of the shirt, just like. <laughs> oh but my gosh. I'm so excited about it because we're doing, uh, <coughs> We're doing a lot of my art pieces Mm -hmm. on it, which I was really excited about because I've always wanted to get it out there. 
Uh, Your art is incredible. Oh, it's really good. I really honestly. appreciate that. It's honestly gotten better after the accident because... You spent so much time probably doing it, right? I was on bed rest for about 13 months. Right. So you got to find something to do. Right, and right. You can only masturbate so much. Yeah. <laughs> before <laughs> chafing. So... <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah I'm I love the sacred geometry like that's some of my favorite things to do it's a new style I love the fractal designs mm-hmm. uh I really just I'm loving just deepening myself with the art and I really want to make girls feel sexy and empowered and I want them to know that you can be cute and want to make yourself look pretty but you can also do other things with yourself, develop a skill, become an artist. And I've mm-hmm. seen more and more of this. I saw this beautiful girl, uh, Lily, paint the other day live, and it was just stunning what she could do. I oh, mean, wow. it was and it was watercolor, and she would just drip these massive droplets of paint down mm-hmm. the canvas, and slowly over time, it took this formation of this beautiful girl's figure. Wow. And I couldn't believe it. I just oh, took my breath away. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, you know, I, it's funny. I always wanted to be an artist when I was younger, and that was something that I focused on for a long time, but I, I could, wasn't. Really? Oh, no, I was terrible at it. I could see you being an amazing artist. No, no, I wasn't. That's why I turned to photography. Oh. Because photography, when I started doing that, I realized photography was a way for me to create art without having put pen to paper because I couldn't there you put go. pen to paper well. Like I just wasn't good at it. So right. photography became that outlet for me. But I wanted to be an artist since I was a young uh-huh. age. I just didn't know the direction that it would take. I'm the same the medium. I'm the same way because I was I think we got the reverse is like I grew up in such a small town with a big family mm-hmm. so we couldn't really afford a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I was homeschooled and all I kind of had was my pencils and my paper. Mm-hmm. And so I had to teach myself how to draw. Right. So I bought this how to draw book. Mm-hmm. And thusly, here I am. Yeah. And I'm really excited because we're doing we're doing bodysuits, leggings, cloaks, hats. We're doing uh, collaborations with different uh, music artists. Oh, cool. So, Do you know what the clothing line is going to be called yet? Uh, well, Scummy Bears is the overall brand. But right. uh, my line is called M.I. and U. Okay. So it's Madison, Ivy, and you. So it's a little bit more subtle. That way, if you want to like wear it out kind of thing, and people are like, he's wearing a porn star's name. Yeah, like, yeah, it's not so like obvious. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Because I want people to know that it's me, but at the same time, I want people not to feel so maybe insecure about like, oh... People are gonna know that I yeah like for me like I won't wear like porn shirts out in public and I won't wear anything I have like a twisties cardigan like I'll wear it to work yep. or like a browser shirt but I won't <laughs> I won't wear it out in public because I just don't want the attention yes and like if I mm-hmm. wore a bra- like my browsers tank top yeah. out to the store yeah it would be oh that'd be terrible idea. yeah <laughs> <laughs> terrible idea like I love their shirts but it's like I I can't wear them and yeah. I want people to feel comfortable right right Angela so. White has like a really great logo that's kind of ambiguous and it's it's just like a and W, um, but it's put together in a cool way. It looks like a really cool logo, but you don't know what it stands for unless you like knew who she was. Oh, very cool. So I actually, she gave me a, sh- a hat that I gave to my boyfriend because my boyfriend wears like so many fucking hats. <laughs> I swear to God, like he must have like 25 hats <laughs> and they're all on the coat rack in the living room and I, there's no room for my coats because it's all his hats. But anyways, <laughs> so she gave him a hat and he will wear it out because it's not so like obvious. You know? you it's go. not like wearing like a browser's hat. Very much so. Yeah. I do. I like that. I like the subtlety of it. Of It's like, you know, I'm there, but I'm like, this is more about the art kind right. of thing. Like, I want people to like really look at the art and appreciate it. Right. And if they don't like it, they don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. But not because it came from a porn star. Right. Right. No, your stuff's really good, honestly. So I'm excited. You'll have to send me some stuff. I'll yes. totally rock it. Oh my God, I so will. Yeah. 100%. I'm going to send you a huge box. Yay! <laughs> Um, okay, so let's. Uh, I guess let's get to the topic that like you keep, we keep alluding to because oh, it's such yes. a huge part of your life. So yes. let's talk about cannabis. No, I mean, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, the accident. Yes. Oh, that was a. I, I mean, an accident is always a terrifying and unexpected experience. Mm. That's why, obviously, it is called an accident. But it's you never realize that you're able to, you're going to be able to handle something like that until you're put in that situation. Mm. I never lost consciousness through the entire thing, waiting there on the side of the road for the ambulance to show up. They pulled me out of the car. Everyone's asking my name, where I am. I'm relaying information just perfectly fine, but the pain is just increasing and increasing. So you guys 
Was it raining out? Or? We just hit like a slippery patch of ice. Oh, right, because it was snow. Yeah, yeah. We, that was in D.C. And uh, my side of the vehicle just went straight into a rock and a tree. And because I'm so short, uh-huh. I didn't catch the airbags. So oh. the seatbelt technically ripped me in half. <laughs> And so it broke two of my vertebrae, uh-huh. and then it ripped my intestines away from my stomach, punctured my duodenum, and my pancreas. Holy shit. I don't even uh. know what a duodenum is, but it sounds terrible. A duodenum, which I didn't know this thing existed <laughs> either, the duodenum is this tiny little organ that is almost, if you lose it, you'll die, essentially. Okay. And it connects your pancreas to your stomach to your intestines. Okay. And it is like the center point for everything that connects everything. And it's so tiny and it's so little that you can't mess with it. Mm -hmm. So because the damage was so severe, Mm -hmm. we had to go in and we had to sew up each organ away from each other. And we had to place tubes in by drilling them into my sides and they would feed into the organ, and then the organ's function would essentially function outside my body due to a machine that was standing next to Sorry, me. Sorry, my face keeps going. <laughs> I just I keep know, going like this, like, what the fuck? I know. Like, honestly, wow. like, sitting there watching your internal organs literally feeding out into different machines and knowing that they're running your body for you Jesus. is, like, one of the most surreal and, like, horrifying things I could ever experience. Yeah. And I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy, but it gives you the greatest respect and perspective in life. I bet. Because they came in one day, and I, I will never forget this day, and my whole team of doctors came in, and they never come in together because doctors are all so busy. Right. And their faces were just staring straight at the floor, and one of them just was like, you know what? We've done six surgeries now. We've tried everything we can. We can't do anything else for you. You should start preparing yourself for the worst. And that was... The worst, like what? Like like death. Jesus. Like, you are going to die here, essentially. And so, like, I I had to accept at that moment that, okay, well, I'm going to die thousands of miles from home in this hospital. And this is going to be how I go. And then there was a moment inside of me where I just felt so defeated... And I just remember looking at my hands <coughs> and thinking, this this can't be it. This can't be the way life goes. Mm-hmm. I have to keep going. I have to dance. I have to sing. I have to run. I have to jump. I have to fuck. Like, yeah. I can't. Yeah. And so I just kind of started making jokes day by day. Well, the doctors would come in, see how I was doing. I got... I had them bring a 65-inch uh, plasma screen to my uh, hospital room. So I was, like, just sitting there watching TV, playing Candy Crush all day, mm-hmm. just waiting for news, waiting to hear, oh, am I getting any better? Weeks passed. Nothing. And during this entire time, I was not allowed to eat or drink anything because of all my organs being separated. Right. So, so your organs are still separated. They were separated, and finally, after nine months, we got, like... What I thought was worst news in the world. One of the bags and one of the tubes stopped draining all of the substance that would flow in and out of the right. organ. And to our surprise, the organs had started to heal themselves back together, which had about an 8% chance of doing so. Uh-huh. And I was at the top hospital in the U.S., and they'd seen five cases like mine in 25 years, and only Jesus. one had ever survived. Holy shit. So I'm very lucky. Wow. So now you're like one <clears throat> of two. One of two. Wow. That's crazy. It was, so how long did it take you to recover completely? I'm still not 100%. Okay. I'm still going through physical therapy. I have to get uh, cortisone and steroid injections in my spine, in my scar tissue, uh, I mean, it's a process. It's been three years already. Wow. And it's been 11 major surgeries and 27 procedures. Jesus. And it's racked up, I mean, close to a million dollars in medical bills. Wow. So it's definitely no joke. Yeah. But it 
it definitely changed me. I, I definitely see things better in myself mm-hmm. that maybe wouldn't have been there before. Like, okay, like what? I just find that I appreciate everyone and everything so much more. The mm-hmm. love, the laughter, even like the painful moments in life are mm-hmm. just, they have a, like this bitter sweetness that I cherish. Yeah. Because Cause you're alive. Because I'm alive. Yeah. And I'm walking around. And that's, that in itself like was one of the biggest things too. They were like, well, we don't expect you to walk, let alone survive. So Wow. So, that yeah. is amazing. Um, what a crazy inspirational story. <coughs> Isn't it nuts too how we have to like go through such an incredibly severe experience to gain that kind of insight and appreciation? Because we forget, I think, I mean, I know for me definitely, like I often feel invincible and, you know, I I don't realize how precious life is and how lucky we all are to have like all our fragile we are. Yeah, I mean, we really are. Like human life is fragile and it can, um, it can, go so fast so fast and you just don't you don't ever think about like today could be my last day no and and i would imagine that that definitely occurs to you more it does and i i think about that day often and it it just reminds me to be grateful for everything like when you're sitting there at the airport and your plane's delayed and you're Mm -hmm. just like oh fuck yeah and then it's like well there could be so much worse yeah than sitting in a airport yeah. where there's plugins everywhere. I have a device that can take me to any source of entertainment essentially. Mm-hmm. So I've been trying to like practice like having perspective in life and being grateful for things. Mm-hmm. So I'll I'll have thoughts like like for example what you said, like sitting in an airport and like your plane's laid and like, oh my God, this is such a pain in the ass. And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. Let's look at like this another way. How lucky am I to be able to afford to get on a plane and travel somewhere? Right. How lucky am I to be in an air-conditioned building with technological devices right. that can keep me distracted and air conditioning and food yep. and I and mean shoes on my feet, just shoes everything. On my feet. And to be flying home to a place where I have somebody who loves me, I have a bed that I can sleep. You know what I mean? Like yep. we, we we focus so much on like these little day to day convenience inconveniences, and we just blow them up to be like such a <sighs> fucking big deal. And it's like it clouds it, is it. Not a big deal. It does. Like you're so lucky to have these problems. Right. I mean, first world problems. You know? It is. We always catch ourselves yeah. complaining, and I still like to complain. Honestly. Oh, I love to complain. It's like my favorite thing. It's, I can't B- help I love it. like a good bitch fest. It's it's great. A, I, I just have to. Sometimes you ha- you gotta yeah. let it out. You can't be like fucking like the Dalai Lama no, all day. No, yeah. no. Even the Dalai Lama probably gave himself one time where yeah. he's just like, oh, well, fuck these people. He was like, God damn it, fuck idiot. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it was it was just really f- uh, interesting because in the beginning of the accident, I had no idea how bad I was hurt. I mm. honestly thought I had just cracked a rib. Wow. And it was, like, two weeks before AVN. Uh-huh. So I was thinking, like, great, I'm going to be, like, limping down the red carpet with, like, a cast on. Yeah. And mm. I did not think that I would be trapped in a hospital for months on end. Jesus. But I remember getting to the emergency room and then being like, oh, no, she has metal in her hair. And it's because I have my clip-in extensions at the mm-hmm. time. And I was kind of unconscious at that moment. Mm-hmm. But I could hear them talking around me. And they're like, okay, well, I think we're going to have to shave her head before we wheel her in for an MRI and everything. And I will instantly, my eyes sprang open. Yeah, like, bitch, you're not going to touch my weave. And I'm like, hell no. <laughs> and I'm like, nope, 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 don't touch my hair. And in the neck brace, strapped down to the bed, I wiggle my arms up, clip out my extensions, and then hand them to the nurse. Oh, my God. And I'm like, okay, I'm good. And then I just pass out. <laughs> That's amazing. And then like three or four days later, I wake up and apparently I'm like trying to karate chop doctors because (laughs) I don't know where I am because of obviously the trauma and the drugs they had me on. I thought I was in like some foreign place and I was being held captive. So they had to like at one point, they're like, apparently this is very common for people to do this. But uh, it took six nurses to restrain me. And then I had to have a guard at my door because I would bite my restraints off. Wow. Because I was so convinced in my traumatized state that I was somewhere that I 
I was being hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was. I was in pain, but my yeah. mind could not comprehend it. Right. It was fascinating, though. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, my sister's a nurse, and she has all kinds of insane stories of being, like, attacked by patients. My brother, and, like, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not uncommon at all. No. <sighs> that's nuts. Apparently, I kicked a doctor in the face, too. <laughs> and, but apparently, he was, like, the worst and meanest doctor on the floor, so all the nurses loved me after <laughs> it. <laughs> That's so funny. They're like, you kicked the one person you should have. Wow, that's amazing. God, I'm so glad you're okay. I remember hearing about that, and I was just, I remember here, I remember you telling me that like you'd like broken your back, and I was like, there is no way that that girl like can't not walk again. Like I can't believe it. Right. And then I remember we touched base again at some point, and you said something along the lines of like, I'm gonna get through this. I'm gonna recover 100 percent because that's what I believe. Yeah. Like is gonna happen. But like you, I think the diagnosis was still like it unsure. Was, it was completely. But unsure. you were just like, I'm determined to like make a full recovery. Yeah. And I was like, that's amazing. And that's where it comes down to is it comes down to the mindset mm-hmm. is of the person. Do you have the will, the want to live? Yeah. Because giving up is easy. Yes. Working to stay alive is yes. hard. You want to hear a crazy story, actually. My mom, um, so my mom had my sister, my sister's the youngest in our family, and she had a cesarean section, and um, the doctor gave her too much anesthetic, mm-hmm. and her heart actually stopped. And so they had to come in, and they had to, like, try to resuscitate her. And my mom is <laughs> not, like, a hippy-dippy yeah. spiritual person. Like, she doesn't really believe in God, the afterlife, any of that stuff, right? Mm. But she says that she distinctly remembers having a choice to stay alive or to let go. And she said she could hear like my dad's voice and she could hear the doctors and the nurses. Yep. And she felt incredibly peaceful, like she was kind of floating. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I, this feels like kind of nice. I kind of just want to like let go and like just fade away. And this just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like she just felt this overwhelming sense of peace. Mm-hmm. But then she heard my dad's voice and then she remembered that she had children and she had like a it commitment pulls you to right life. Yeah. And it like, Pulled her, and she did so that she definitely felt like I could like she had a choice, and she chose to fight, and then she came back. But yes. how crazy is that? You know, like it is though. It's 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 those loved ones that you have around you that mm-hmm. that rally your spirit and mm-hmm. like your sense of self to bring you back. Because I called, because I didn't know who to call. I called mm-hmm. my two best friends, my girlfriend mm-hmm. at the time, and then our other friend, mm-hmm. and I flew both of them out to D.C. and they took care of me. And it was crazy the difference that their presence made. I was, like, completely unaware in my memory that that they were there. But the moment that they would leave, the nurses would be like, okay, we put enough drugs in her to keep a 300-pound man down Mm -hmm. for eight hours. Mm -hmm. Half an hour later, they'd be calling my friends, can you please come back? Because she is, like, going nuts right now. Wow. And the moment they would leave the room, it's like I could feel them away from me. Yeah. At the, them just being there, like, just comforted me so much. It was That's incredible. weird. Wow. But I, I could feel them there, even yeah. though I couldn't see them. Right, right, right. That's just, amazing. I'm so grateful to them, my Danny and my Lauren. Aww. Love you guys. Aww. Um. So, so you came back, which honestly, like, I didn't, I, I was so surprised. I was so surprised and obviously so happy to hear that you were, that you were coming back and you were going to start performing again. Um, and so you re-signed with, with MindGeek. Yes. And so you've been shooting for browsers? Browsers mostly. We did one babe scene Mm -hmm. and then I think we have a twisties thing coming up this week and then another scene with browsers this week. So, uh, yeah, it was it was scary coming back because I have like little scars, obviously, mm-hmm. that I haven't gotten through my all of my therapy. I haven't mm-hmm. started laser therapy on them, so people will notice that there are marks mm-hmm. on my body. But I mean, it's it's a part of who I am. I want to come back and I want to prove to myself that I can do it. Mm-hmm. This is this is who I am, and I love going out there, and I love just being me and. Porn is a part of me, mm-hmm. and it was never. I never needed anything to escape it. It was always my escape. So right. I wanted to come back because it was so fun. How are you like physically handling the scenes? Are there any like positions that you can't do because of your back, or are you pretty much like able to kind of? I'm able to really actually perform at a almost optimal capacity. It's not really until like my 
endorphins kind of like slow. Mm, you're like maybe more sore afterwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, ooh, didn't feel that while that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, it's it's definitely they've been so gracious as to take it very easy with me and mm-hmm. give me everyone that I asked to work with mm-hmm. and really not asking that much of me. And even if they ask something, they're like, Are you okay with this? Do you yeah. want to test it out? So yeah. Everyone's being so kind. Oh, that's great. So. Well, you deserve it. Aww. You're a motherfucking princess. No, you're a motherfucking princess. <laughs> no, you, you, no, you, you are. You are. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so you are planning for your next <coughs> anal scene, right? Yes, yes. And I shot your first anal scene. Yes, I remember that. That was so. We did this very. Actually, that was the first day that I met. Um, Andy and uh, Kylie Ireland, who I had here on my podcast. Yeah, I'd actually met Kylie before, but I hadn't seen her in a long time, and that's when because they were doing the um, the set design. Yes, and we were doing this kind of like whole. What was the theme again? It was all your idea, yes, too, right? Yes, I, I wrote the script, I designed all the wardrobe, and I brought, like, stage props and, like, mm-hmm. lanterns that I had hand-painted myself. See? See what I'm saying? You were, like, the model, you are, like, the producer, you're, like, the wardrobe, your set design. I just like, wanted it. You should charge, like, five times the amount, because you do the job of, like, five people. I just wanted my butthole to be represented in the best light, <laughs> <laughs> honestly. I'm like, it's coming out for the first time. It's a party. It needs to be grand. It does. <laughs> and I, I loved it. I wanted a tiger, mm-hmm. though. We went, I remember. <laughs> and I even offered. I was like, I will pay for the tiger. I Yeah, because I think I remember talking to Kieran about that because I shot a tiger for Penthouse. I remember you telling me And about I was that. like, I can get you a tiger. Um, but then they opted up. They used the same guy. They ended up using a snake instead. Yeah. I think a tiger was a little They were just much. like, what if you get eaten before the scene? Yeah, well, they would have to keep. I mean, when I shot the tiger, they had to keep it like on a leash at all times. They'd uh, use like yeah. a, they have like these invisible looking ones that you can kind of Photoshop out later. Yeah, but there was no way the trainer was gonna like let him off leash. Oh, like, I'm sure not. 100% no. I'm sure. Yeah. And it would, I loved the snake, though. The albino python was beautiful. Yeah, it was. And then I had my girlfriend as mm-hmm. one of the extras, and then yes. Miss Abigail yes. Mack as the other. I feel like that might have been the first time I met Abigail. She actually, I believe, just started around that yeah. time. Yeah. So, yeah, which was really, really funny. Yeah. Uh, Kristen, uh, uh, yeah, Kirsten, no, Kristen. Uh, Kieran's wife, was Kirsten. Supposed to, Kirsten, yes, was supposed to be my other extra, mm-hmm. but she just found out that week that they were pregnant with their baby. Oh, she had to go and get pregnant. I Jesus. know, and be happy and have a family. Oh, shucks, my butthole needs you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, so that was. Um, I remember it was cold out. Oh, it was very cold, and they were having a hard time keeping the flames going. So wait, what kind of like scenario? It was like you had like the slaves, right? Like yes. was it? And it was Mick too. It was Mick too. Mick, it was Mick again, and he was taking your butthole's virginity, yes. and he was like your slave. Yes, it was very. My inspiration for that scene was like a combination of a couple things: mm-hmm. of like eyes wide shut, mm-hmm. the scene where everyone's obviously in the masks mm-hmm. and the naked girls mm-hmm. and everything. And then there's another scene from a uh, series Spartacus, mm. and I loved that. Show. I loved the it show. Was so sexual, it was so much full frontal nudity. I movie. loved it. it. A but lot of man dick. A lot of man dick. Totally into that. And lots of real <laughs> like good, good fucking. Yeah. And so there's a scene where the highborn ladies start wanting to fuck the gladiators. Yes, I remember that. So they paint them up all gold, and they put masks on them, and they put them in this very elegant, surrounded setting of, like, billowing curtains and fire, and it just felt, like, very exotic and romantic but sensual Mm. and that you could do anything your heart desired here. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I wanted to recreate with Mm. my scene. Yeah. it was great. It was beautiful. I I get a lot of compliments from girls about it, and I'm very excited. About what was that. the one song that you played over and over again? That was like <laughs> I, I think I drove. High? Yes, yes. <laughs> by Keys and Crates. I love you guys. You know how much I do. Yes, and now it's so funny because I was talking to Andy about this the other day. Every time we hear that song, we think about your anal scene. Because like I had for, it for all time. All I will ever think about is Madison Ivy's butthole every time that song comes on. <laughs> you hear that, Keys and Crates? My butthole. Our yep. scene was dedicated to you. Yep. <laughs> I got to stay high all the time. Yep. 
It's so funny. So funny, yeah. I played that song over and over because it did. It, it fed the mood of what I was yeah, trying yeah, to totally accentuate. Totally understandable. There's like, it, it's funny though because that that's not the first time that that's happened to me. Like, I remember last time I shot Lana Rhodes, that song had just come out called um, uh, Havana by oh, Camilla yes. Cabello or whatever, and she played it over and over again that day. So now every time I hear that song, I think of Lana Rhodes. Right. It's just like it burned in my brain. That is so funny. Yeah. I just remember like looking up and like I think I was in regular cowgirl and I like go to turn around to give you know like sexy face to the camera and all of a sudden I just like see the guys behind the camera doing like their arms like are going down and they're going hi all the time and they're like <laughs> waving back and forth and I'm just like okay don't break character you did not just see that you got one thing I got to say about Kieran's sets which I I think because I haven't been on many of his mm-hmm. um, I think that's the only one I've ever worked on and then like when he produced DP Star and I was one of the judges oh, really? I was there. Um, but he always has fun. He does. You know, like he's always I love joking. Working for him. Yeah, he's always joking around. Like he's, always, but he, like he obviously he gets things done and he's very professional. But yeah, he definitely like has a good time on set. Him, Francois, their whole crew. Yeah, Peggy, their makeup artist. I yeah. adore her. Yeah, I no, mean, she's amazing. The whole team. He stole her from me. <gasps> I knew it. It's okay. It's okay. I can't compete with his shooting schedule, and uh, he loves her, and he takes great care of her. And um, I'm they're shooting constantly. Oh yeah, oh, no, my I, God. I know. It's it's. But yeah, she um, Peggy was actually the only one that my mom would use for like the longest time. I can see that. My mom's very picky about her makeup artists because not only do you have to be good, but you have to be kind of quiet. If you talk too much, it makes her crazy. <laughs> oh, I had one makeup artist. I think it was it was around my first like couple of scenes, mm-hmm. and she got on her phone after putting on maybe just like my under shadow to mm-hmm. keep my above shadow from falling. Mm-hmm. And then she goes to the mirror, starts doing her own makeup, and then answers the phone. And for 45 minutes, she's on a phone call. Are you fucking serious? And I'm sitting there, not even like 10% into hair and makeup. And mm-hmm. then the director comes in and looks at me and is like, what the fuck is is going on. Wow. And she's like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go. Oh, sorry, we're, we're gonna finish up really quick. Two hours later. Oh, my God. We're four and a half hours behind schedule. Wow. And I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand your mom's uh, yeah. wanting of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, some people are just insanely fucking slow. That's that's super obnoxious. Oh, yes. And I, I understand people are can be perfectionists, but there's yes, a difference there's a between. Difference. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what do you have any idea what you're planning for your next anal scene? Well, I wanna do I wanna do something very very similar. Not not a lot of dialogue because sometimes I think that a lot of dialogue can dilute the sex. I want it to be mm. sensual. I want mm. it to be more You want to tell the story like visually as yes. opposed to with dialogue. Got it. So I wore this really lovely black uh sequent dress to the adult video awards mm-hmm. this year and I kind of wanted to start out in like this big manor house where I'm kinda of, you just see my hands like gliding along the railing as I make my way up the stairs. Mm-hmm. And there's just like a note casually laying there. Mm-hmm. And it just says, wait for me. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, hands come up from behind me. Mm-hmm. And they just start running all up and down my body. Mm-hmm. And then a knife comes out. And he starts cutting the dress off of me. Ooh, so there's like a moment of like anticipation. Yes. I'm sure. Could this, this could go could, could go very badly right now. It could go very badly. It could go very dark and then, but you you don't see the guy yet. Mm-hmm. You just hear his voice, and then as mm-hmm. you see the blade just cutting the cloth mm-hmm. off of me, it's like this isn't what I wanted you to wear. Is mm-hmm. all you hear, and then it just falls to the floor, mm-hmm. and then you'll see like this pan away of like go and change into what I've laid out for you, mm-hmm. and you'll see this just my figure walk away, just completely naked in heels, and then emerge in this just complete dramatic kind of like dominatrixly sexy like wow. strappy black thing that I've yeah. designed so that's awesome I'm kind of thinking that's what yeah. I want to do have you ever thought about directing I've actually thought about it a lot because I, I mean like you just really I mean you just storyboarded like way more like a huge like intro oh, thank like you. more than like I just I will say that I didn't necessarily put into <laughs> a little more to say sometimes but yeah I mean it just seems to me like you have a very specific vision you obviously have a lot of experience in the industry you do your own wardrobe like I mean, it just seems to me like that almost seems like the next natural step for you. And that's kind of where I'm, I'm aiming at is I, I really want to create a fantasy because I've 
discovered how many couples and girl fans that I have. Mm. And it's amazing to me. And they all bring up the my anal scene, actually. Mm. And anal is usually not something like most girls usually like to watch. Right. <laughs> but uh, they love it because they love the, the dramatic nature of it. They love the sensualness. And that's really what I want is I want people to really feel that I... I am enjoying this. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying creating this experience for you. Mm -hmm. I want this fantasy to feed into you, and I want you to feel like I'm there almost with you, turning Mm -hmm. you on. Mm -hmm. So That's awesome. I hope one day that uh, I will get a chance to to direct. Yeah, I mean, that just makes a ton (laughs) of sense to me. And, you know, I mean, we need more female directors, and I think that that girls who were stars at one point... um, or still are whatever you know. Tend I think it's to a good transition. Have, yeah, and it's they have the perspective of understanding what it's like to be the model, and what yes. it's like to be behind the camera, the physical toll that some of these scenes can take. Yes, like, you know what I mean. Like I just feel like you could relate a lot better to your performers than. And that's how I feel when I'm on your set. Like you just relate to a girl, obviously in every way because yeah. you are. You understand us. Yes. You understand like how this would make us feel. Mm-hmm. Just every aspect, and that's why I request you always for my butthole. So I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping to get you for my butthole again. Yeah, I hope so too. Oh, you hear that, browsers? <laughs> I need it. Do I, like, but when am I gonna get to like shoot you again, like for something? Like, I feel like I, I only get to shoot you when it's your anal scene. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to convince them to like give me some like just solos or something to shoot or some, or like, like let girl, me shoot girls. you a girl, girl for twisties. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna talk to them a little bit more. You like, because the we, Madison AB, you get what you want. We have like twelve girl girl scenes that we haven't shot that need to be shot by oh, really? like by July. Oh Jesus! Yeah, so uh, we're a little behind in our girl girl yeah. shooting. So wow. I'm gonna be like, look, these are on the contract and they're not getting done. So yeah. you better book Holly. Yeah, because she's better. the best. That's right, the best. That's right. <laughs> um, it's so funny because like everybody, I mean, obviously not only I love you, but like you're like everyone's favorite. Like the other day, so my chiropractor has kind of no. I think like pretended for a long time that like he didn't necessarily know what I did for a living. Oh, that's but he always totally fun. does. And then finally the other day, like we ended up talking about it, and he was like, "You know who I really like." He's like, I really like Madison Ivy. I'm like, I fucking knew it. No. You know what's funny, too, is he lives in your area. That's so funny. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> and my chiropractor was like, yeah, it was hilarious. I was like, how Aww. cute. Do you get recognized a lot when you go out? I actually do, surprisingly. I'm like, not surprised. I, I get a lot of those like looks of like, yes. oh, my God. I was I worried to, to let you walk around Costa Rica. <laughs> like, I didn't even want you going to the grocery store because we were also trying to keep on the down low that, right. like, we had a bunch of adult stars. Like, because we were in a small town. Yeah. And I didn't want to, like, cause a thing. So I was like, I was remembering, I'm like, Madison can't go to anywhere by herself. She can't go to the grocery store. Well, I can't let her out of the house. Like, People are going to know who she is. And you can pick me up and you can just carry me away. So, <laughs> so it just steals you. <laughs> I just lose, lose you in Costa Rica all these times. Oh, that's what my friends used to do when we were in high school. Is like my party trick was being able to fit into like a basic size backpack. Really? Yeah, and they could Fuck zip off. it up and like put it on. Oh my god, that's like, hilarious! It was so funny How and tall weird. Are you? I'm four eleven. Are you? Yeah. I don't, I, see, I forget that. I mean, I know you're petite, but I forget you have such a big personality. I forget you're. It's because I four eleven, and I always bring eight inch heels mm. because I want to extend the length of my body. Yeah. So you know what though, shorter people live longer. Mm, they really? do. No, honestly, they do because they. If you look at like the people who like live the longest, like they're never super tall people mm. because when you're very tall, you put a lot of stress on your joints, on your bones, on your organs. It's very true. It's, there's more to process. Uh, that's very um, true. When you're smaller, it's you actually totally age better. Mm. Like your spine doesn't. Because my dad's very tall and. It's starting to it's it's, starting it's not to wear. it's starting to wear on him, mm. you know. Being he's like six three and he's seventy five, oh, wow. and you know, like getting around, like walking because he's so tall is kind of wow six three. Yeah, that is tall. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. So, I yeah. So you're lucky. I'm very you lucky. Should be fortu- you should be fortunate. You should be you should be grateful. I am so fucking grateful. Honestly, I'm sitting here with one of those gorgeous and just talented women Stop in the it. world. Talking about the things that we got to do together <laughs> and the things we're gonna do together. Yes. I mean, life is so freaking sweet that yeah. I can't. Yeah. I just can't every day. Mm-hmm. How, um, so any other uh, projects coming up that we should know about? Ooh. We talked about your clothing, we talked about your anal scene. Ooh. I mean, not that that's not enough that I you've got know. going on. 
I'm hoping to shoot an interracial scene this year, too. Ooh. Because I don't have any of those out, because I've been saving them, especially mm. because I like to spread things out. And that's mm-hmm. kind of how I've prolonged my career so much, as I started out uh, doing just, like, one or two boy girls here or there, mm-hmm. and then it was mostly girl-girl for, like, three and a half years. Mm-hmm. And then I wouldn't allow, like, anything more than, like, two guys for a couple of years mm-hmm. and then after seven years mm-hmm. of being in the business they got one anal scene out of me mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> so, that's true so it's like i just it's helped prolong uh my longevity and mm-hmm. i think it's kind of created this little like ooh, i want it I yeah i really, really want it yeah do you have any idea who you want to work with Ooh, uh, I, Isaiah Maxwell? Yeah, I do. I knew you were going to say that. He's I've, like everybody's favorite. I've gotten, I've heard that from uh, everyone. Have you met him? No. Oh, he's lovely. Is he? Yeah, he's so charming. He's so polite. He's oh. really genuine, um, super, like, great, just, like, really positive energy. Oh, I love that. Yeah, and he's, like, incredibly sexy. Oh, I, I shot Lisa Ann's comeback scene with him, and, like, mm. he put a suit on for it. He looks so good in a suit. I was like, because that's how I want to. I want to do it in a suit, yeah. really elegant, just like Isaiah looks great in a mm. suit. Mm. Like I was like <laughs> focusing, shooting. Just like, okay. I was like, yeah, and I was like, okay, concentrate on Lisa. Concentrate on Lisa. <laughs> She's a star. Lisa, can you move over to the side a little bit so I can get more Isaiah? Right. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> he also said the same thing. Yeah, he's 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 great. Mm, love I would it. highly recommend him. Oh. Love it. Yeah, and then, you, you would have a good time with them. Ooh, and then I'm so excited because I'm going to be giving away a bunch of my um, uh, my butt fleshlights for uh, April anal. April so, anal. Yes. April 18th is National Anal Day. I didn't know. Of course there's a national day for everything, but I didn't know that. This one, I believe, is actually coined by a comedian, Jim Jeffries. Oh, I know who yes. he is. Yes. Adore him. I think he's hilarious. Yeah. And so he started this whole April anal thing mm-hmm. because, you know, girls have Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. So guys, what do they need? They need a day for themselves. Don't they have steak and blowjob day? I think they, they do have that too, but I, I like April anal better. Mm. Like, and there's just something about it for me. Yeah. So rolls off the tongue. Rolls a off the better. tongue. <laughs> rolls off the tongue right into the asshole perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be giving out a bunch of uh, my uh, butthole fleshlights. For awesome. April anal through my Instagram. So if you go comment on your on my post, then uh, you'll be entered to win. Awesome. Well, actually, then this is a great time for you to tell all of our listeners, for those who don't know, um, what your Instagram is, all your social media, where people yes. can find you. You can find me mostly on my Instagram, which is 420 Madison Ivy, and then on Twitter, which is Madison 420 Ivy. It would be the same, but uh, Instagram loves to delete people, yes. as we all know. I know. I haven't had that, thank God. But um, They deleted me once, and I learned my lesson. Yeah. I was like, nope, okay, sorry. Yeah. You have like 2 million followers or something now, don't you? I think I, it's like 1.2 or something oh. like that. Like, it's getting up there. I'm but. like, oh, oh, only 1.2 <laughs> million, oh. But I'm like, oh, I should be more, like, I should be better about it, but mm. I just like... I draw so much mm-hmm. that that takes up the time that I could be doing fun Snapchatting and mm-hmm. like things like that. And Snapchat, I used to be on there a lot, but I'm kind of weeding off of it because I don't like the format that they change mm-hmm. to. And then I hate the fact that they delete and like give you timeouts. That was the whole fun with Snapchat. I know, I know, right? <laughs> I first started using Snapchat actually because I was having, this is a while ago, I was having an affair with a married <laughs> man. <laughs> He would send me pictures, the gags on Snapchat, and he would only do it that way because it would be deleted the after. Like the truth he comes it. out. So that's like how I started on Snapchat, mm. and so it's like, what the fuck? Now they're like being so uptight about I it. Know. And then, and then it was nice because it's like if someone screenshotted you, then it told you. So it was like, yes. okay, well now you can't send certain yes. things because. People will screenshot you, but then if you screenshot someone, then they know. I know, and I actually didn't know that because I remember I screen capped <laughs> one of the pictures, and then I, and then it set. And I was like, "Oh shit, he's gonna kill me!" <laughs> like, ah. Oh, I know, it's Sorry. so funny. Uh, but yeah, Snapchat, change your shit back for the love of everything. Just like don't, 
<sighs> you were so much fun before. I know. I agree. But then they get like these fucking investors and they get like corporate sponsors yes. and then they get like really up to, and it's just so funny because, you know, so many of these social media platforms and the internet in general has been spearheaded by, um, the adult industry. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's, that's always been at the cutting edge of technology that's pushed technology forward is the adult industry. Yep. And so it's funny that like we help you know, push these technologies out into like the forefront and like make these companies big and then they like shut us down. It's so true. Yeah. It's like, why? What's the point? Everybody's scared of sex. It is. It's very, it's such a taboo thing that so many people are so afraid to still talk about. Yeah. But everybody fucking does it. Everybody watches porn. Thinks about it. Everybody thinks about it. Like Like, nobody wants to talk about it. We want to talk about it, though. We do want to talk about it. And that's why we are here at <laughs> Holly Randall Unfiltered to talk about those kinds of things. Yeah. Madison, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's so me. good to see you. Honestly, it's such a pleasure to see you again. Every time I get to see you, it's like a breath of fresh air. Mm. Oh, my God. So speaking of, sorry, just real quick <laughs> before we go, breath of fresh air, that reminded me that you mentioned before we started this podcast is there's an entire Reddit uh, <gasps> dedicated to the size of your nostrils. Yes. So <laughs> apparently I have very cavernous nostrils, <laughs> and which is funny because people... I get like tons of people on one end saying, stop having plastic surgery on your face. Uh-huh. I've never had any plastic surgery on my face. I've just lost so much weight from the accident yeah. that it looks a lot thinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everyone's You've like, always had like a kind of cat-like, cat-like look. thing. Because like the pictures that I took of you when yeah. you were 18, you still had that. Because you have kind of like a, a, like an exotic eye. Yeah. So I could see like why people would be like, oh, she's had like a facelift. But yep. you just have that. And the, but my cheekbones have finally like come out. I lost the, the little well, like, so, the, yeah, because you're older. Yeah, yeah. And it's just it's funny because they it's they go one way or the other. They're like, wow, she needs to like stop fucking with her face. And then the other one is like, wow, she needs to really fix those cavernous nostrils of hers. I don't think there's anything wrong with your nostrils for the record. I just thought it was funny that like someone had started a whole forum <laughs> about it, and then a bunch of people chimed in, and it's become a thing. <laughs> so I mean. I, I can't take offense to it, to be honest, because if someone's complaining about your nostrils on a forum, you must be doing something right. Yeah. Because, I mean, damn, they have to pick the mo- they most minuscule. something. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's funny. Like, he's like, oh, it's, it's so big, but I can't stick my dick in there. Like, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> like, what, what was your thought behind that? Did you, do you want to stick your dick up my nostril or what? <laughs> Guys are always looking for new holes to put their dick in. <laughs> you know, it's just not enough to have the vagina, right. the asshole, and the mouth. And then fourth hole behind the, behind the knee. It's when you close your knee back and you jerk the dick off. I have never, knee. I have never done that. Fourth hole. What about can you, you could do it you with could, your elbow? You could, do, you could do it with your elbow. I feel like that would be easier. It, you would think, but it just depends on the positioning of the angle. If he's standing and if you're laying on the bed on your side, yeah, like it's it's very. So if you're doing, it's more like a jerking off motion. When mm. you have your leg up, it's more of like a him fucking your leg motion. Hmm. Interesting. You know, I, I I should. I'm I'm gonna try that. You know. I'm going to be like, I'm going to go home and tell my boyfriend. I'm like, hey, I want to try something different. <laughs> like, do you want to fuck the back of my knee? He's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Come on, baby, you're really hot. Come on, you know you want my knee. My fuck knee. You know, Andrew Blake, who was a very famous director um, like a decade back, uh, had an armpit fetish. I noticed that about a lot of actually certain guys. They love like this, like natural sweat. Mm. And they like they want to like lick it off of you. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. I mean, if it's your thing, it's your thing. Yeah. I just I'm not into licking sweat. No. Though I can personally. I can like I get the point of like liking like someone's true smell. Like I the love it. Like, yeah, I love it. Like when my man's like sweaty or like come, he comes to the gym or comes from hockey. He's yes. always like, oh my god, I smell. I'm like, I love it. But yeah, because that's like. You know that that pheromone connection, mm-hmm. but I don't. I don't think I'd want to lick the sweat yes. off of his body. I think it's more funny when people seek out just like random people that they want to lick the sweat off them. Mm-hmm. Like it's like definitely like lick the sweat off your partner, but like lick the sweat off just some random person. Like, yeah, everyone, I know everyone's person, got their thing. They, they love it though. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> got their thing. Hey, you know what? God bless you. Right. If you want to lick the sweat off people's armpits. So, More power to you, people. We're not going to stop do it. you. We will approve of it. 
We are not going to judge you. We will not judge you. (laughs) As long as you don't judge my nostrils. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. (laughs) All right, Madison. Well, thank you for coming on. Everybody go follow her on social media if you haven't already. And make sure that you check out her scenes on Brazzers and her upcoming anal scene at some point. I can't wait to see how that comes out. I'm so excited. It's going to be amazing. And um, you guys can follow me at Holly Randall on Twitter and Instagram. And if you like this podcast, please, please, please go rate it and leave me a review. I would appreciate it so very much. And if you want to support me, you can go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. And I have all kinds of cool perks and prizes there for my supporters. So thank you guys so much. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you, Madison. I couldn't do this without you. And um, it was so good to see you. It was so good to see you. All right, guys. I will see the rest of you next week. Bye, everyone.